everyone, good evening. Um, sorry I'm going so late. I kind of had to push myself to do this because the topic I'm going to talk about tonight is um, a very hard one for me. Uh, and those of you who know me will actually understand why um, this is going to be a very sensitive subject on my part. Um, but what I want to talk to you about is um, how endometriosis causes infertility and how infertility impacted me. So um, I'm going to give you a little bit of description, so just kind of bear with me a little bit because I'm going to read to you exactly what um, my research, what I found, says. So um, severe endometriosis causes pelvic scarring and distortion of the pelvic anatomy. Um, the tubes can become damaged or blocked, and the ovaries often cause cysts of endometriosis, other, otherwise known as endometriomas. Um, this may become adherent to the uterus, bowel, or pelvic sidewall. And any of these distortions can result in infertility. Um, so yes, I know most of you are going to ask me, well, how can you um, experience infertility? You have a child. Well, just because I have a child doesn't necessarily mean that infertility passed me. I have actually what you call secondary infertility. Um, I wasn't infertile until well after I had Leah um, and when the endometriosis got really bad again. Uh, for a third time or after my second surgery. Anyway, um, so I'm going to give you a little bit of insight as far as what my doctor found in my second surgery um, and how that actually relates to um, the causes of infertility and how mind-blowing it will be to you as far as how and why I got pregnant. Um, so after my, my second surgery, I met back up with the reproductive specialist to talk about possibly having a child because my husband and I, after we got married, tried for about six or seven months to get pregnant and we were not successful. So my OBGYN sent me to a reproductive specialist because he knew um, with the endometrioma that they found um, before my second surgery, it actually ruptured before I had the surgery, um, that it was a possibility that... I needed extra help and he would not be able to help me. Um, anyway, the reproductive specialist told me that my tubes were so damaged, um, he had to clean the endometriosis out. And it was almost as if, and they were closed shut, it was almost as if the um, endometriosis welded my tubes shut. And he said the ends of them were so damaged that they wouldn't do their job. So they pretty much need to hold the egg. So they can get fertilized, and if the tubes can't do that, then there's no way that you'll be able to conceive on your own. Um, and I'll never forget what he told me. Um, he said, it's not humanly possible for you to conceive on your own. Um, so he told me the next step. I mean, I, I, to be honest with you, I went in this, into this appointment thinking, hey, you know, we're going to have this conversation. He's going to give me some um, fertility drugs. We're going to be good to go. Yeah. I walked in with a big smile on my face and I walked out with crocodile tears running down my face. Um, he told me the only way I would be able to have kids and the only way he would be able to help me is by in vitro fertilization um, after he does a tubal removal. Um, apparently that's how bad my tubes were, he said. So, um, of course, you know, after talking with the uh, financial lady and speaking with my insurance company, um, in vitro is not covered by our insurance. So there went all hope. That was going to cost us about $25,000 per egg to um, insert. And it's just not something that we had at the time. I mean, we just got married. We had a wedding we still got to pay for. Um, there's no way we could do that. So... Um, my depression got the worst it has ever been. Um, my entire world just felt like it got cr um, came tumbling down and my dreams were crushed. I've always dreamed of having two kids. I've always dreamed of being a mom. You know, one, one of my dreams came true. I became a, a wife. I had a husband, my Prince Charming. But I needed to seal a deal and have a child with my soulmate. And that was, I was told it was not going to happen. Um... So then, uh, after my deep depression, and I came to, you know, I started to come back a little bit and come back to myself a little, not much, but my husband and I started talking about adoption. Um, so we did our research, and lo and behold, as soon as we decided to um, go ahead and go through with the process, I found out I was pregnant. How? How? How 
is that possible with everything that the doctor told me? How, how, how did I get pregnant? I never understood. The only thing that I can tell you is, is by the grace of God and power of prayer, I got pregnant. Um, my mom and my grandmother, um, I'll never forget, I still hear her, her voice to this day, um, even after she's been gone for two years now. She's the, the, the baby that wasn't supposed to be, the little one that wasn't supposed to be. She still says that. I mean, she has always said that. Um, so I'm going to fast forward a little bit. Um, as I told you guys last night, about a year and a half after um, I had Leah, the pain started to come back. Um, and I started having issues again. Um, I started noticing that, you know, I had endometriomas when I went to the doctor. The endometriomas came back, and I had more than just one. Um, but the pain wasn't as constant as it has been in the past. So I thought that was kind of weird, and so I became a little hopeful. I decided to um, try for another child, even though, you know, we always said, no, we're not ready, we can't really financially afford it, but you'll never be able to afford to have kids. I mean, come on, just face it. They're going to be, it's just not going to, I'm stumbling, I'm sorry. <laughs> Please bear with me. This is very tough for me to talk about. Um, there's never going to be a time we would never be able to afford a child. Um, we would always find a way, just to be honest. So um, so we tried. We tried for a good, I want to say maybe two years, a year and a half, two years. Um, and it just hit me. I knew as soon as the pain just kept getting worse and worse and worse that... Um, I was already infertile, and I had no idea, had absolutely no idea, which, um, that really hurt, uh, to be honest, I, I, like I told you in my very first video, having two kids were my dream, it was my life, um, but I had to come to terms with it, and I had to um, let go of the hope, because it was just not going to happen, it was never going to happen. Um, and after doing more research on um, what multiple surgeries can do to your body and how many how many times can I put my body through that, I just can't do it. I, I couldn't put myself mentally through multiple surgeries. I couldn't physically put my body through multiple surgeries. So um, I knew it was time to file those divorce papers with this horrendous illness and just be done and get my quality of life back. Um, but the when the wake up call was, was when I went to go do my workout one morning and I was six weeks into it and two weeks away from finishing my very first program because um, I've never really finished one to be honest with you because um, of the endometriosis holding me back. I actually got six weeks into this and five minutes into this workout I fell flat on my face, literally flat on my face. I couldn't do anything. Um, I, I know I've told you guys before about how women feel like they can't get out of bed some mornings. For those five weeks leading up to my, my hysterectomy, I, I, it took every ounce of energy I had just to get out of bed. It took every ounce of energy I had just to go to work. And to think I was helping setting up a brand new store. A brand new store. Setting up fixtures. How I did it with what I was going through, I have no idea. It was just beyond me. Um, but willpower, to be honest. Anyway, um, one thing I, I want to tell you, and there's a lot of women out there that um, I'm meeting day in and day out. Ever since my hysterectomy, I've met more women who has this illness. And it's just, you know, my heart breaks for them every single day. Um, one thing I can say is, officially, I am, I am an endometriosis survivor. I'm very happy and blessed to say that, um, but do I still hurt on the inside knowing that I can't have more kids? Yes, I do. That is a daily struggle and a daily battle that I, I fight with just about every day. Um, but not every woman, woman is the same. Every woman has different stages of endometriosis. Unfortunately, I was the lucky one, should I say, to have stage 4 endometriosis. Um, I had the severe, I had the endometriomas, um, 
I had the, the, the pelvic scarring. I had all of that. And I did not know until just recently when I did this research on it that I had the severe until my hysterectomy when my doctor told me I had the severe. So the reproductive specialist didn't tell me that. I had to find out for myself and I had to have my other doctor after my hysterectomy tell me. If I would have known that, I would have not put myself through trying to have another child and looking at each pregnancy test after pregnancy test after pregnancy test come up negative and just my heart break every time just one line comes up. So um, to all you ladies who do have or anyone you know that has endometriosis, do me one favor. Don't be hopeful. Um, hope can actually, I mean, I know a lot of people tell you, be hopeful, be hopeful. It can happen one day. You just don't know. Just live your life the way you want to live your life. Don't sit there and dwell or don't sit there and be obsessive over getting pregnant because your entire dreams will get crushed if you're like me. However, in the same sense, not every woman is like me. You can be cured or God can bless you with a child as well. Um, just Infertility sucks. It really does. But I, I'm, I'm happy to say I have my life back. I really do. Um, anyway, I, I wrote a blog again and it explains a lot more as far as um, what my doctor found in my surgery um, in the process that in mindset that I went through um, after the surgery and also through um, finding out that I was infertile so um, please take a, uh, a look at it as soon as I post it on Facebook um, I just need to finalize some touches on it and then it will be yours to read um, so on Monday I'm going to cover with you um, Leading up to my hysterectomy, how I decided to, a little bit more detail is how I decided to have the hysterectomy um, and the process that my husband and I had to go through emotionally and physically to um, leading up to my surgery. So um, I hope you all are having a good night. And for those of you who did join me at 1030 at night, um, thank you very much. And thank you for bearing with me um, as I talked about this uh, very, very tough an emotional subject. Anyway, have a great night. Thank you so much.